Hi everyone, it's Alex from Risk Academy. And people quite often ask me, can we model and quantify all risks in the world, uh, or all different types of risks? And they usually come up with you know heaps of examples of the risks that we we can't really model. And uh, um, my response to that is, uh, very rarely, very rarely, you would actually be in the situation where you actually need to model a risk for the sake of modeling your risk. Risk management is less about understanding what the risks are, uh, rather it is about understanding whether something is a good or a bad decision, or something is a good or a bad process, something is an achievable or unachievable KPI, with risks in mind. And there's usually a number of risks that you try to add as volatility to whatever decision process activity or KPI or strategic objective or operational objective or forecast you, you, you are doing. So risk analysis, for the sake of risk analysis, is actually very, very rare. Unless somebody explicitly asks you about there's a new legislation coming in, there's a new specific risk um, that uh, is relevant to our organization, and you as the risk manager need to model our exposure to that specific risk. Now those circumstances are actually extremely rare. They're not as often as you think. And now I'm sure some of you are immediately thinking, but what about the audit committee and the board who wants to see a risk profile of the organization um, on an annual basis? And I'm saying, well, that's actually not quite true. They don't want to see a risk profile per se. They want to see how the strategic objectives or the company strategy or the annual budget looks like with risks in mind. So if you can give them a different answer, they ask you, I mean, they, they will probably ask you for a risk profile, but you don't have to give them a risk profile because there's a better way. You can actually apply in a basic Monte Carlo simulation to the strategy or the budget or the KPIs and highlight how um, that budget looks like with risks in mind. You can write scenarios, you can highlight what the sensitive areas are, what the, what the assumptions, uh, the most risky assumptions are, and, and so on. So the board's kind of request or the audit committee request is really not a good enough reason to do a risk profile because it's actually pretty time consuming um, so because you can you know give them a response in a much better way and uh, um, so saying that I actually don't think there are many frequent instances where you would be required to model a particular risk so what this means is is then uh, risk modeling as a tool is a tool in your decision making, your planning, your budgeting, your forecasting, or any kind of activity that has to do with uh, with uncertainty. So to answer the original question, can we model all, all the risks? Well, the simple answer is most of the time you don't have to, because all we're trying to do, or most of the time what we're trying to do with risk modeling is we're trying to take an existing decision, existing budget, existing strategy, existing investment plan, existing schedule, a, existing anything in Excel, Microsoft Project, or Primavera, or any any kind of that kind of software, and we're trying to add volatility to that and see, but we're basically trying to shake it a little bit to see how sustainable it is to different internal or external shocks, to uncertainty. And the reality is, the reality is actually pretty sad. Um, the reality is that sometimes even little shocks will collapse the whole budget altogether because people are so optimistic because they traditional decision-making processes, traditional planning, budgeting processes are built without proper attention to uncertainty because they're so overly optimistic in some of the assumptions and the methodology doesn't quite allow you to challenge that, uh, that optimism is that you will see that most of the time by modeling only a small portion of real risks the whole thing collapses already and you don't have to kind of go further if you if you if you come to the CEO and say this is a wonderful strategy but there's only a three percent chance of achieving that with with even some of the risks modeled now then you don't have to continue modeling other additional risks to show that it's actually not three percent but it's zero 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 point you know, nine uh, zero point zero 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 um, one percent the the kind of the, the decision is already clear the strategy is not sustainable something needs to change and uh, usually modeling some of the risks some of the most obvious risks is enough to guide the decision makers so to answer the original question 
Um, should we model all, all the risks or can we model all the risks? Probably, probably not, but we, we rarely have to. Usually, if we apply risk management to decision making, investment decision making, planning decision making, budgeting decision making, only modeling some of the risks, some of the time, is sufficient to actually significantly impact on the decision making within the organization. Um, I mean, clearly this is um, up for interpretation and may seem controversial to some people, um, but I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. Please write underneath this video. For now, for me, thank you and goodbye.